Okay, welcome everybody to an introduction to how to operate AutoCAD. Today, we're just gonna go over a little bit of how we use this vector program to work. And uh, I've got two videos on my face. We've got, we're sharing my screen right now. I am running AutoCAD 2017. You are more than likely running a more frequent or more uh, a newer version of AutoCAD. That is okay. If you have AutoCAD 2020, AutoCAD 2021, that is fine. Um, you need AutoCAD architecture and you wanna have the student version. You get the student version by going to Autodesk's website. They're the manufacturer of this program. And you click sign in in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. And, um, and then you sign in with your at jefferson.edu account. Keep track of that. Keep track of that email, write it down in your sketchbook. Not the, can't see my screen. Okay, hang on. Gonna share screen one. Can you see my screen now? Can you guys see my screen now? Yes. You're good. You're good, okay. So, um, so the other thing is, is that um, you're gonna wanna not write down your password, but you're gonna wanna write down the login name because if you have to change it, it Autodesk is gonna think you're a different person. Once you have it downloaded, you wanna download AutoCAD architecture. There are other architectures. There are other, uh, sorry, there are other AutoCAD systems like AutoCAD engineering, AutoCAD HVAC, AutoCAD structural. Don't download those, please. Just download AutoCAD architecture. Now, we're gonna start by just making a new drawing. So you could say start drawing and it's got some templates that you can choose from. But I guess I'm old school, so I'm just going to go up here and say, this is where the file command would be. Um, it's got this fancy A on the ribbon, is what this thing is called. Excuse me, and we're going to say new. And when we go to new, it's going to ask us a couple of questions. So what kind of file do you want? Now, AutoCAD uses a vector format, which means that it saves the equations that make the picture, not the actual pixels in the picture itself, which means that you can draw at scale or you can draw one-to-one, -one, which means one foot equals one foot. But you need to tell AutoCAD what you're gonna be drawing ahead of time. So AutoCAD has the ability to draw in two dimensions, but also in three dimensions. Today, and for Viz2, we are gonna be drawing in two dimensions. We're never gonna be drawing in three dimensions. And if we draw in two dimensions, and this is why I have two cameras set up, if you draw in two dimensions, but you're in a three-dimensional drawing, it is possible to accidentally move into the Z axis. That's the height axis, the depth axis. So on this camera, it's gonna look like my fingers are touching. And on the other camera, you're gonna see that my fingers are not actually anywhere close to each other. This is possible to do in AutoCAD and AutoCAD will do its best to make that happen. Boop. Uh, one second. I'm trying to put my at jefferson.edu email into AutoCAD, but yep. it's telling me to create an account instead because it doesn't recognize that. Yeah. So you're going to need to. So, so when you're making an educational account, you're going to need to create an account because there isn't one already made for you. This is an agreement that you personally are making with AutoCAD that you're going to download the, a free copy of their software to use for educational purposes as a student. You're not going to use it to make money and you're going to use it to learn. So this is an agreement that you're making individually with them. The benefit to this is that you can download it onto your computer and because it's a legal licensed version, you don't have to connect to the internet every time and it has to ping a license somewhere to make sure that it's legal. Got it. The other way to do this would be to do a server that's on campus, but then we would only have a finite amount of licenses and you guys would have to go online you would have to log into the server and you could check out a license, but if all the licenses were checked out, you couldn't get a new license. So number one, that's more expensive. If it, if it sounds confusing, it is. And um, in practice, we found that that means that some students keep the licenses checked out so that they always have it. And then we need actually way more licenses than we need. So this is a much easier, more stable version of doing something. It also means that if you have a problem with Autodesk's product, the software itself, Autodesk Help, and the Autodesk Forum on their website are the place to go. We'll go over how to get help once we get into the drawing. Okay, thank you. Help is always F1. Whether you're in Adobe or AutoCAD, it's always F1, but we'll go over it a little bit more. So right now, 
we're going to do an AutoCAD two-dimensional drawing. Now, there is no AutoCAD 2D. It's just called AutoCAD, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to do this one right here. Now, as you get better at the program, you're going to see that you're going to have your own plot styles. There might even be professors that have styles that they want you to do, or you might have a classmate that shares their printer settings with you. That's more advanced. We're not going to get into that today. So we're going to select this AutoCAD, and we're going to do a file of type DWG. All right, that's just what we want. And we're going to say open. Now, we are. it's loading it all up, and it's right here. So let's just go over the parts of what this is called. I'm going to turn on my, I'm going to just turn this on because it might, you guys might see this just a little bit better. So I have this uh, little blinky red light that follows me around now. Okay, this is called the ribbon up here. And these are all of the control layers. This is the graphic user interface that we use to interface with the tools to tell it what it is that we want it to do. Much like in Adobe, which is over here on the left-hand side of those screens. There's different things that we can do. So the home one is the baseline one that you're always gonna use. And then there's things like insert, Annotate and annotate does exactly what you think it does. It lets you write on the program, on the on the drawing file. There's a lot of these other things. There's these add-ins. Don't worry about those. There's featured apps. Don't worry about those. And there's BIM 360. Don't worry about those. We're going to spend almost all of our time right here on the home screen. AutoCAD is a complex program, but it's also a very simple program. There's about 20 20 commands that I can teach you, and that's probably 90% of AutoCAD. If if you think about this, right, um, in order to, like I said, AutoCAD's kind of like a Jeep. It has an accelerator, a brake, an emergency brake, four-wheel drive, headlights on and off. It doesn't really have doors. It has safety belts. To steer right, you turn right. To steer left, you turn left. That's pretty much how it works. So I'm going to go over some of those tools with you and how we get to them. And we'll upload this to our YouTube channel so that you guys have it if you have questions and you can rewatch it and, and it'll be indexable. So what we're, right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep going over the interface and we'll go over the tools and then you guys will see how this is a much more hospitable environment for drawing geometric shapes than Illustrator. We love you Illustrator, but not for squares. Okay, so up here, you can see that there's lines polylines, circles, arcs, and let's see. Yep, this is pretty nice. So if you don't know what a polyline is, hover over it. And if you don't have Autodesk downloaded right now, it's all right, just watch and let it soak in, okay? So if you hover over it, it will define what it is for you. It'll tell you what the command is, and it'll give a little demonstration of what it is. So let's check out this circle command. So we'll just float over it, and there it goes. Now, it's showing you in this animation. Do you see right down here? It says circle in black. Here it says P line in black. Those are the command codes. AutoCAD initially did not have a graphic user interface. You had to draw by knowing the codes, and you would just do the coding. And people still today draw this way because it's faster. Also because the tools in AutoCAD, just like in Adobe, occasionally change where they are. But the name of the command can't change because too many people are using it and too many people remember it. So if you forget a command, it's really easy. Just find the graphic interface of what you want to do, like a line. And it will tell you right down here, right above where it says press F1 for help, that is the command line command. So why don't you write that down right now in your notebook, right? A fresh, fresh sheet on your notebook that you're going to put a paper clip in. And you're going to say that line is the command for line. And the next one you're going to write is P line, which is the command for polyline. And a polyline is a multi-segmented line that is joined and is cohesive one object throughout its entirety. Circle. Now, this is really helpful. You can either write this down or not. But the command for circle is circle. Check this out. The command for arc 
is arc. This trend is going to continue. The command for rectangle is rectang. Believe me, this is not going to go on forever. The command for move is move. And for copy is copy. Guys, you already know 25% of AutoCAD. Because every shape is some sort of rectangle, arc, circle, polyline, line, copy, or move. There's just a few other ones to go over. There's other things that should look familiar, like stretch. And stretch allows you to take an existing object and change the geometry that it, it already has and exists. And you can, you can lock it into a plane and move it just in one direction, or you can dynamically move it in two directions. But that's what stretch does, much like what we learned in, uh, in Photoshop. So the other thing I wanted to point out before we get along here too much, do you see how circle, um, when I put this on, it gives me this animation. And there's a one with a green X and a two with a green X. Andrew, what does that do? Well, the one is where you're going to click first. So you do some commands. After you type the command, it runs further subcommands. The first command is click where you want the center of your circle and then click where you want the radius. And don't worry, if you can't remember this, it will actually prompt you. So check this out. I'm going to click circle. I'm going to go down here. And do you see on my screen, it actually says specify center point for circle. And I can actually type in a number or I can just click. And then I can move it. And as I move it out, it's giving me a reading on what the diameter is. So I can do it graphically with my mouse, or I can type it in and I can say five. And I can hit enter. And it gives me a radius of five. Um, if I don't know the rectangle command, I can say, oh, let's see, let's hover over it. And you can see that there is one click for one side and then another click for the opposite corner. So let's click on the rectangle command. It comes up and you can see it's actually typing, the graphic interface is typing the command code down here for me. So click, specify second corner, and I can stretch it out and I can say, well, I want it on the other side inside the circle. Cool. There we go. We got a circle and a rectangle. Nice. If you look up here, you can see that there is an arrow pointing down. Let's click on that arrow. If you click on that arrow, other ways of drawing circles come up. And this is kind of cool because there's more than one way to draw a circle. I like this because sometimes I like to draw my circles from the outside in, and sometimes I like to draw them from the inside out. So let's draw this circle from the outside. So this is a two-point circle. And if I'm not sure, I can stay over it, and it'll show me the new way to do this. So over here, I'm going to do two-point circle. So two-point circle, it's going to say, specify the first endpoint of the circle's diameter. So last time we did it by radius. Now we're going to do it by diameter. And I could do a diameter of 10. And these two circles are congruent. I can also do that for rectangles. I can do a different polygon shape. Um, and it'll if I do a polygon and I click, it says, before I even click, it says, please enter the number of sides. So you can do a four-sided polygon, which is also known as a rectangle. So I'm going to hit Enter, select the center. And then you can say, oh, how do you want to do this polygon? Well, so this is drawing guaranteed square because it's doing all the sides equal. A polygon that has four sides where all the sides are equal is a square. All squares are rectangles, not all rectangles are squares. So right now, basic platonic geometry going on right now and not in a very, very fancy way. Let me show you guys the command line. You may have noticed down here, there's this command line and it says type command. Now I can click on it and it'll send a prompt for me, but I could also just say, Circle. So let me just type, start typing circle. I'm not going to click anything. I'm just going to start typing on my keyboard. Circle. And you can see that actually when I type C, it automatically brings up circle because when you start typing C, the most common, the most common command you're going to use is the circle command. So I can actually stop there. I can keep typing circle the whole way, but I can just type C. And now it'll bring up the top 10. C commands, commands that start with the letter C. And with my with my uh, mouse, I can just click on circle and I can make a circle again. Let's do a radius of 10. There we go. 
Okay, I can do that with anything. I can also do that with rectangle. Remember rectangle was rectang. So let's start R, E, C. So I actually know this because I've drawn so many rectangles in the years of drawing on AutoCAD that I can just hit R, E, C. My fingers remember where it's at. And this is the big reason why a lot of people still draw this way because it's very fast with two hands, you use one hand on the keyboard and your other hand with the mouse. I, when my one hand gets store, sore, I have trained myself over the years to be ambidextrous with a mouse. So I just switch hands to change it up a little bit. Rectang, click on it, specify first corner, specify second corner, there we go. Now, here's something else that's pretty interesting. If I don't, change the command, it actually just stays in rectangle command. And I can keep clicking and drawing rectangles. Not bad. Now, as I've been talking to you guys, I've been saying that I use my hands to do shortcuts and that there's lots of different ways to go about doing stuff. So we're going to get into these. Ver these are kind of the noun commands, right? They create an object. So let's call these the nouns. And these are the verbs. Right? They do an action. They perform some kind of an action. Everything that I'm going to ask you to do this semester is going to happen when you create content. It's going to happen on this and this command line. Anything else that I ask you to do that affects the output is going to use this, which is called layers, or this match properties over here. And those are all the buttons that we're going to teach you that you're going to need to know. OK, I have been using my keyboard. And when I'm using my keyboard, I'm going to just hold this up in front of you guys for a minute. So when I'm using my keyboard, the for AutoCAD, the enter button right, is all the way over here. So when I type rectangle, R-E-C, I have to reach all the way over here to press enter. Well, where my hand is, R-E-C and then enter, is that's a long distance. Believe me, it adds up after you know, hours of drawing. I'm not saying for this class, I'm saying when you're, you know, a paid employee. So they decided that spacebar would also be enter. So you can hit REC enter by hitting the spacebar. And if you see on my screen, I'm now in the rectangle command, specify first point, specify second point, and I can hit spacebar to do that. Okay, the other thing that allows me to press enter is the enter key. And the other thing that allows me to press enter, and this is why you need to have a mouse. It can be a trackball mouse, it can be an optical mouse. This mouse is very nice. It works on my couch just as good as it works on my desk. Um, this, this, AKA right click, okay? Right click is also enter. So enter is enter, spacebar is enter, and right click is enter. Basically, it means complete command. All right. And the computer is set up to recognize that. So if I say circle, which is C, I can hit enter with my spacebar. And I'm in circle already. I can hit click. I can go all the way out and hit click again. I can also watch this. I'm going to hit return with the right button of my mouse, click. And it brings up options. Undo the circle that you just made. Pan the camera. Repeat the command that you just did. So I'm going to say repeat circle. And I can keep repeating the circle. Right click, repeat circle, and it can keep going. Now, the other reason why we want to have at least a two button mouse with a mouse wheel, and these are like, you know, between eight to 11 bucks. If you buy, if you uh, think you're somebody that might lose this and you don't like buying replacement batteries, get one with a cord that plugs in via USB. All right. It's, you'll never run out of batteries. You're going to take this and with the mouse wheel, mouse wheel is zoom in and zoom out. So I'm just going to move the mouse wheel in and out. That's zoom in and zoom out. If you have a laptop that allows you to, to pinch the screen, you can use that to zoom and zoom out, but then you smudge the surface that you're trying to draw on. And it's kind of tough. If you have a smart mouse pad, you can do that as well, but it's not as accurate. Those pads are really made for doing things like browsing the web. Zoom in and zoom out. As a matter of fact, the zoom command, can you guys guess what the zoom command is? Yeah, that's right. 
it's zoom. And the word for it is just Z. So we're going to do the command line one more time. Z space. Now, here's the cool thing. There's different kinds of zoom. There's zoom in, there's zoom out, there's zoom dynamically. And they're all listed down here. You don't even have to remember them. Zoom all will zoom so that it shows everything. Zoom dynamic means that it will zoom in and out on the screen depending on how you move your mouse. Uh, I find zoom dynamic to make me incredibly car sick, so I just never use it. Zoom extents is one of my favorite ones, and it's zoom ex, and it will do the extents of whatever it is that you have selected. Okay. Um, I can hit zoom, and then I can select from these commands by mousing over them, or if you notice, there's a slight color change. The first letter is capitalized and it's blue. The letters that are capitalized are the shortcut code. So Z space, E space is zoom extents. Z space, A space is zoom all. Z space, P space is zoom previous. Question? Uh, so what does the scrolling mouse wheel up and down do if it doesn't zoom? So scrolling the mouse wheel up and down zooms, clicking oh. and holding the mouse wheel pans. And okay. if you guys could see my screen, it's not going to show up for you. But if I click and hold the mouse wheel, it's like a little hand that grabs the screen and it allows me to drag it around. And that's nice because it won't drag, unlike Miro, where it kind of works that way, but not quite, it doesn't grab something and move that object. It just grabs everything and moves it around. So if I zoom way in, I can grab and move around. Now here's why zoom is both an important command and a Spider-Man tool. Remember I told you guys that this draws at one-to-one -one scale. So this means that I can take my mouse wheel and watch this, we're gonna have some fun. Guys, do you know where my drawing is? Technically, it's on the screen, but we are now in orbit around the Earth, which means I can start zooming in and I have no idea where my project is. And I can spend hours looking for it and you're just not gonna find it. So if we do zoom all, we've got, we're back. We're back to our project. The other thing that we can do, if you guys have ever seen the movie Powers of 10 by the designers slash architects, Charles and Ray Eames, they zoom out, but they also zoom in. So watch this, we can zoom in and I can zoom in and zoom in and zoom in and zoom in and zoom in. And then I can keep zooming in and I can keep on zooming in for a long time. It'll keep saying regenerating model to a level of precision that's just ridiculous. That's impossible. That's pointless, really. So you can zoom out to Jupiter and then zoom into individual molecules. This is absolutely correct. Why is it allowed to do that? Because it's a program that is so simple that all it does is exactly what you tell it. So if, it says, if you say zoom out, it'll zoom out. If you say draw a line that's a mile long, it'll do it. Because the equation for a line that's one millimeter long and the equation for a line that's a mile long, fundamentally in terms of computer memory is not really a big difference. Now, if I said make a mile long line out of a pencil, you'd need a couple dozen pencils. So now we can pan around, we can even zoom out and it feels like we're lost, right? So Z space, zoom all space gets us back to here. This is really, really important. There's one more mistake that I wanna show you that happens to absolutely everybody. And so when it happens to you, pat yourself on the back and say, Andrew said this would happen. And that's that you zoom out and you accidentally fling something almost to infinity, but not quite because, well, you're not, you're not a Titan. So let's draw another circle. So we'll, we'll start with circle C space and we'll draw it out here. Okay. And now I'm going to zoom out and you guys can probably see these circles really small on the screen. One's right over by the X and one's right over by the Y. And then while I'm doing that, I could say, oh, um, copy that. We're going to go over that in just a moment. And I'm going to go to there. And I'm going to say zoom all. Do you guys see how my drawing's really small over here? And these circles are really small over here. This is a bummer. Let's do the move command one more time. Move it over to here. All right, ready? Our friendly zoom extends. 
oh snap, everything's really tiny. Now this would be made worse if the layer that these were on was black on a black background or white on a white background, this can happen. So when that happens, what you do is you put this selector box throughout your entire, right? This, and you say, I wanna select absolutely everything on my screen. I'm gonna show you how I did that in just a minute. And it's gonna show up with these little vector control lines, like we were talking about a little bit earlier. Every vector has a control line and you can say zoom extends, zoom selected. Oh, there's something right there. I'm gonna select it, zoom selected. Come on, hang on, Andrew's a little rusty. There we go, now we can zoom in on it. This guy, zoom, object. There, now I'm here and I can delete it. And uh, of course, deleting it, you can delete it with the delete, the backspace. Uh, I have a Mac, even though I'm operating a PC, I have a Mac wireless keyboard, so it only has the delete key, but the backspace will also make it delete. Or you can just say, erase, zoom, all. See, I still have that circle out here, so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more, and you can see that pixel of strange color right there. I'm gonna select that, zoom, object. There we go, we zoomed in, erase, enter, zoom all. We cleaned it up, and we're back to our drawing. All right, so the most common ways to get lost in AutoCAD is because they go on, it goes on technically, it goes on for infinity. It can't actually do that, but if you ask it, it will try and it will crash. There's no way, there's no good way for you to ask it to do that. So you, you guys should be okay. Like I said, if you crash it this week, you get to take a break, give yourself a cookie. All right, it, it happens, it happens. So you might as well just tell us, come back to class, tell us how it happened. All right, now, what we're going to do now is we're going to go through the verb commands. I've already done some of them automatically just by hand here. So first thing, when you're doing a, a verb command, you need a noun for the verb to, to act upon, right? So we can't move something without saying what we're going to move. So you have to select it. You can mouse over something and you'll see that it highlights in a slightly darker line weight, or since we're doing white on black here, because I end up drafting a lot at night, so I have my screen to set to black. Um, you can select it by hitting click, right? Select over it and hit click. Oftentimes though, we wanna select a bunch of things. So you click and hold and you get this dashed line thing. And the green dashed line, which is going counterclockwise, anything it crosses, when you let go, it will select. If you go clockwise, it's a blue dashed line thingy and it will only select that which is completely inside of it. So check this out. It's only going to select that square because that's the only thing completely contained within that piece. So remember, one way is green, one way is blue. Personally, I like using the rectangles to select things. This is called box select. Uh, the current default on my computer is set to this, which I think is obnoxious. But you can look up by hitting F1 how to do that. If you run into any problems so far, what is select? How is move? I don't know where this stuff is, right? F1 is help. Number one command, any program, any program running in Windows and most programs running in Mac, F1 is help. So if we hit F1, we get Autodesk AutoCAD help. Now, being connected to the internet is better, but you don't have to be. There's a lot of this help that already exists right here and you can just write it right here. So you can say select box and it's gonna give you, oh, selection mode, select box, dialog box, quick select tool. And it's gonna need you to do some reading, but you can select the quick select box and you can be like, how do I do this? What does it do? Where does it take me? And it'll take you to those places. The other option is to sign in and it'll take you online and that'll give you a forum. And I wouldn't be honest if I didn't tell you guys that when I'm working on a project, I hardly go an hour without encountering a question that I need an answer to that I don't have the answer to. And I teach this program. So when you have questions for it, don't feel bad if you're talking to other people, if you need help, if you wanna make a proactive uh, request of our, our peer tutor, or if you go on the help forums. The best way to learn how to do AutoCAD is to open a Zoom room and just be frustrated together with somebody else. 
so that you don't feel like you're doing it alone. Because sometimes it can feel like you're pushing a rock up the hill and it keeps, it keeps crushing you. So doing it with somebody else is very, very helpful. When we get back to having class normally, I very much encourage you to go into the computer labs when you need to do CAD drawings. It's a great way to get to know upperclassmen by asking them questions. And it's a good way to kind of share the pain and build friendships and learn tools, tricks, and shortcuts. Okay, so F1 is always help. If you start a command that you don't want, cancel is the escape button. And you guys will hear me hitting cancel almost with like Pavlovian regularity. I automatically am trained from a previous version of AutoCAD from the person that taught me that when you're done with a command, you hit escape to make sure that everything is canceled out. You do not have to do that, but you guys are gonna hear me pounding on my keyboard going, escape, escape, escape. And you'll see it on my, on my screen, it'll say cancel. Some commands require a couple of sub commands. And if you get stuck in them or you do the wrong one, so like I will do, let's do two point circle. Let's do three point circle, we'll do three point circle. One, two, and here's three point circle. I can escape and get out of the circle command. Cause I was like, all right, let's do a circle. Here we go. Oh, that's not the kind of circle I wanted to do. Do you guys remember the commands for copy, undo? They're the same universally. Undo is control Z, copy is control C. Universal commands, control V, universal command for paste. Control X, universal command for cut. Control X is cut, control V is paste, control V is paste again, which is basically a cheap copy tool. All right, but we can also do it here. So we can do this and I can, I can type copy and it'll give me some options. Copy, base, and if you're not sure what it is, just hold it over, let it there, and it'll tell you. This is what I love about AutoCAD. If you're not sure what something does and all you can do is remember the letter, type C, find the command, hover over it, wait for it, the animation to give you the answer of what it is. I love this feature. It makes it so user-friendly. So copy with a base point will copy something to the clipboard along with a specified base point. Copy will copy objects in a specified direction. Fascinating. So let's just copy this. Copy, specify second point, specify second point, specify second point, and it'll just keep going. All right, so we've got a lot of circles. We've got a lot of lines. Let's just do a line so you guys can see what a line is. Here is a line. Line keeps drawing line until you hit escape. Remember, I told you guys that each one of these is its own segment. So when I select it, it's a vector. It gives me the midpoint, the endpoints, and that's it. I can grab these and actually move it. But you can see that these are not connected to each other. They look connected, but they're not. A polyline, however, would be. So let's do a polyline. Same way. And then I'm going to hit escape when I'm done to end the command. And now if you see this, it selects all of them. It doesn't give the midpoint, but it does give control lines. And if I move this, it stays connected. Understanding the difference between a polyline, a P line, and a line is really important. Um, arcs are funky versions of polylines. So let's just do an arc. And an arc will set some points. And then a third point, it's like drawing a circle with three points and you can increase or decrease it. And then when you select it, it'll give you those three control points plus its center. And you can move that center around or you can just move this part around, okay? All right, let's copy some of these things and get them organized, shall we? So let's get these circles into a row. Well, it would help to have a construction line and just like construction lines are helpful uh, when you're drawing by yourself, uh, with a ruler, a construction line here is really helpful too. And you can see that my shaky hands don't do a very good job of making this super straight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold shift and it's gonna snap to a horizontal line or it's gonna snap to a vertical line just by holding down the shift button. And then I can click and it keeps it aligned like that. That's pretty nice, all right? There's also a graphic way that I can do that. I can go down here and select ortho. And that mode, I always enact by turning it on. So I'm actually going to turn it on by typing ortho. 
ortho mode. And now it says ortho mode is on. I believe that's there. Yep, there we go. You can also see that it's it's um, shortcut is the F8 button. So now I'm going to do a line again. So that's L spacebar. I'm going to click, and you're going to see that as it's drawing, it's going to want to say in ortho mode, but I turned it off. There we go. Ortho mode is turned back on. And now as I draw, it will only draw orthogonally, orthographically. That means going at 90 degrees to itself, except if I'm snapping, which I'm going to tell you about next. OK, so I'm going to turn ortho off by typing ortho again, ortho mode, ortho, ortho off. Thank you. All right, so ortho is turned off. That little red angle is turned off. And now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about snapping. All right. Uh, this is my favorite command in all of AutoCAD. It has been from the day I learned it. O snap. That is the command. The command is O snap. We're going to click on O snap, and this window is going to come up. This is a more complicated command. This is probably the most complicated command that we're going to go over today. All right. So number one. Uh, is there any way, sorry, I just want to say, uh, is there any way in this program to rebind commands to buttons like mouse buttons? Yes, there are, but it depends on the mouse that you have. So if you have a gaming mouse, you can bind commands to your gaming mouse, but it's different depending on what mouse you have. So this is my fancy drafting mouse that I haven't used in a long time, but I just recently came back across it. It has a, a thumb button. It has a free wheel for the, uh, for the and, a, and a click wheel. And it has three programmable buttons up here on the thumb. So I can actually I can actually use four buttons with my thumb. I had this bound, um, but the software for this mouse is probably different than the software for your mouse. So it's going to be on a person by person basis. Um, all right. So back to OSnap. All right. These are the defaults that are always set up. So OSnap snaps a project to something. So in Adobe, when we had the guidelines turned on, things kind of stuck to the guidelines. So if you were working on a photo, it might stick to a guideline. This allows you to figure out what you want things to stick to. Now, listen carefully. Endpoint, that's the end of a line. Endpoint's a great thing to have turned on. Midpoint, that's the middle of a line. That can be a really helpful thing to have turned on. Center is very helpful. Center will give you the center of a circle. And oftentimes, lots of things are measured to the center of the circle, not to the tangent of the circle. So that's a really nice thing to have turned on. Intersection, anywhere where something crosses something else. And this is where I told you guys that potentially a three-dimensional drawing, this intersection snap can trip you up. Extension, sometimes I have turned on. And perpendicular, sometimes I have turned on. I will turn on tangent when I want it. And then I will go back in and turn it off. And you can turn any of these on by clicking on them right here. Now, there's some that you should never, ever turn on. As a matter of fact, you should never, ever, ever turn them on. I don't even know why this is an option for you to turn it on. These are evil, they're bad, and you should never turn them on. Can I be more clear? This is the fastest way to break your drawing and make it really complicated. And the reason why it's a fast way to break your drawing is because your drawing will look correct and nobody will be able to help with you, help figure out why it's broken. Take this from me. I learned because I broke a very important drawing at my office and spent a week looking for how it was broken. We then decided that it was cheaper for me to just redraw the drawing, which took all weekend and was zero fun. So nearest, never select it. Apparent intersection, never select it. And I'm gonna show you why, so you understand why you shouldn't do this. So I'm gonna draw a line right there. All right, and I'm going to move this line over until it's really close. Okay, do you guys see that this is not touching? Yep. All right, now we're going to zoom out. 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 Do you guys see how it looks like it's intersecting? If we have a parent intersection turned on, it will try to snap to that intersection. And from this view, it'll look like it's an intersection, but we know it actually isn't. If you set up a parent intersection, 
it'll snap and you'll never know. There are some other commands that need things to close their forms all the way. And if you try to run the command on an unclosed form, it will not work. If you try to do the command on a closed form, it will work. If you do the, the command on an apparent intersection, it will try to do it, go into an infinite loop, and either hang up AutoCAD, crash AutoCAD, crash your computer, or corrupt the file. Apparent intersection should not be a choice, but it is. I'm sure there's a reason why, but the reason is so far gone for me, I don't know, and I don't need to tell you why. So you never want to draw things close together unless you know that they're close together. And when things are close together, you want them to snap together. So for example, I'm going to grab this by its end, and I'm going to pull it over until the green square says endpoint, in which case it snaps. And I can zoom on this forever. They are connected. OK, this is a very easy thing to forget. It's a very important thing to remember. We're going to go back in that again. So we're going to typo snap. We're going to go into that window and we're going to say these are the two. These are not Spider-Man tools. These are just straight up villains. All right. These are straight up Ultron. Don't click these buttons. We're going to keep endpoint, center point, intersection. We're going to keep those connected. And I'll show you why perpendicular is helpful. All these little symbols, it will actually show you what kind of connection you're doing. So you can see that on my screen, there's a little perpendicular icon. And it'll say, hey, it's going to snap to a perpendicular. There we go. And if I do this, I'm going to say repeat line. And you're going to see here, it actually says, hey, that's the perpendicular. That's 90 degrees to the circle. And if I repeat it again with tangent turned on, if I go close to here, it'll do perpendicular until it'll do intersection, which is the crossing point, And then it'll do tangent when I reach the tangent. Those are really helpful because by making stuff line up, we can do really, really helpful things. Let me show you. So the move command is move or M spacebar. Specify the base point, move to where you wanted to put it. OK, cool. Thank you. All right, check this out. Copy command is CO for copy, spacebar, and select where you want it to be. OK, well, I'd like to select it to here and keep going. OK, well, we could do that. But wait, there's more. Copy command, OK. What if I copied it from here, and I was about this far away, and I moved it along the line? Do you see since I'm along the line here right now? Oh, come on, snap, snap, buddy, snap, buddy. There we go. You can see that since that intersected and that intersected and it was orthogonal and I was moving it so that it was perpendicular, it just snaps. Now check this out. Copy, space bar, specify the base point. I can specify the base point anywhere in space or at this line. Endpoint, specify endpoint, click. Now I can link to this endpoint, link to this endpoint, link to this endpoint, link to this endpoint. And if you guys see, oh, there's a little bit of a mistake here. Great. I'm going to show you guys this mistake that I made. So these are equidistant from each other, but that's an apparent intersection. And the more I copied it, the more I saw that that was a problem. Let's go back out. We're going to erase these. We'll do a line. We'll take the line. And rather than intersecting it, we'll draw it past here. I'm going to keep it orthogonal. So I'm going to hold down the Shift button, Enter, Escape, Escape. There we go. Now I'm going to select. So I'm clicking with my right mouse button, box selecting over it with the green rectangle, which means select anything that that crosses. Hit the right mouse button again, and I'm going to say CO for copy, space bar, specify base point, end point. And I can keep on checking out. And now this is, these are all equidistant from each other, and I can keep going. That's such a useful command that we might do what's called a macro for that command. And people come out with macros all the time. And matter of fact, some offices have their own macros. But this is one of the earliest ones. And it's one of the most popular. And it's called Array. So I can select this right here. And I can say Array, which is A, R, it's for Array. There it is. And let's just do the animation to show us what this is. And I'll read it to you. Creates multiple copies in a pattern. You can create copies of an object regularly spaced in a rectangle, polar, or path array. This is going to be a path array. So we're going to click array, enter the type, path, select the path, 
Uh, this one. And now it says, how many do you want? And up here, you can see that the menu has changed on the graphic user interface on the ribbon up at the top. So we can make the distance between them be regular. We can make the amount be regular. And we can change any of these amounts. So I can actually say, hmm, expand it, unexpand it, continue, do more, do less. And I can mess around with all of these numbers here to make it good, get more crazy. But wait, there's more. So now I've got all of these objects and they're smart. So if I select one, it selects everything. So if I change one, it'll actually dynamically change the settings for all of them. Let's do it on a slightly more simple shape, shall we? Let's do it on a circle. So we'll move this circle out here. So right, right rectangle to select it, click again to make that a thing. Select it and spacebar for move, get a base point, move it out here, click and save it again. Select it with the selection point, Array, array, let's do a rectangular array. Now this is pretty neat. It used to be that you needed to type in the rows and the columns and I would always get them transposed. I would always put in the columns before the rows or the rows before the columns. Now you can grab these control points because it's a vector and you can say, okay, I want this many rows and columns. Click and then you can say, I will actually want less columns click and then you can say I actually want them further apart this direction and I want them closer together in this direction maybe even so that they're touching each other snap and then when I'm done I hit enter escape escape and there's an array and the other thing that's pretty cool is that it remembers that it's an array so if I click on it I can actually keep adding to it. So I can say, you know what? I actually need another one of these. So let's do five columns, five, enter, and it'll add a fifth one. This is really helpful when you have repetitive things like columns that repeat, windows that repeat, patterns that repeat. This can be really nice. We're not going to get into it. It's eight o'clock. We've been recording for a while. Get a little dry here. Um, I've gone over all of these. Mirror is pretty pretty straightforward, right? Mirror kind of, I bet you guys can imagine what this is going to do. So let's select all of these and we'll use the mirror and it'll say, specify the point of the mirror. Okay, this is the point of the mirror, but actually we can change the mirror. So I can have it be like 45 degrees if I want it to. And then it'll just do a copy and a mirror. Um, this is the same as, ah, and then we get to say erase the source object or not. No, don't, we want two. So we have the mirror and its reflection. This is like flip vertical or flip horizontal in Photoshop. Um, we've got another one that's called scale. So let's grab this circle. And let me see, there was a smaller circle and a larger circle. Let's grab all of these circles. Move these guys out here. Okay, these two circles were twice as the size, twice the size of each other, I believe. So I'm gonna move this guy Joink to there. And let's just make a copy of him and put him out here. So the scale command, S C, S C, there it is, scale, click. Okay, select the object, all right. Crossing box, got it. Are there more objects? No, enter. Specify the base point, okay, click. Is it a copy factor or a, or a reference factor? We'll talk a little bit about those in the in in the future. But there's reference factors that allow you to scale things up at architectural scale. So you can move from quarter scale to 16th scale. But right now, it's just dynamic and on the screen. So you can see that as I do this, it scales up. So if we want it twice as big, I can just say 2, Enter. And now it's twice as big as it used to be. If I want it to be half, do this, repeat scale, select base point. Specify scale factor, 0.5, enter, and we're back to where we started. Kind of handy. There's some other ones that we can do. So if there's a lot of lines going through something and we want to shave them down. So for example, let's say that we have some lines that are going around and making a big mess. Okay, escape. We can use trim. So I'm going to use the trim command, T-R, trim. And it says, select the objects to trim. OK, uh, that is the object that's going to trim the selected objects. Select the objects that you want to trim. 
Fence crossing project edge erase. Oh, let's just do crossing this one. And you can see as I select them. So what it does, imagine that it turns the thing you select into a red hot laser. And then anything that it selects, you say trim it. So this is interesting because in a circle, I can say trim this one and it burns through it. But I can say, no, trim this one and it'll burn through that one instead. And I can be like, dang it, that's not the one I wanted. The opposite of trim is extend, E, X, extend. So I can say, ah, what do you want to extend to? So select the objects to extend to. Let's say that we want stuff extended to that line. So extend that object, enter, and extend that guy, extend that guy. And it won't extend this one because the path, it even says why, paths do not intersect at a bounding edge. So if I did want to extend this to this, there's a couple things I might need to do. And this is where I start to like to get at the beauty of AutoCAD because it acts a lot like how you would draft of the triangle. So if you wanted to make those intersect, well, maybe you would make a line out here. Maybe you would put your drafting edge along that and you would say extend to this line, enter out to there. And then you'd say extend again, EX, enter, select this, enter, select that line to there like that. And then you could say trim, TR, enter, select to trim here, trim that object, and now they're made, right? And that's a construction line, and you just delete that. But Andrew doesn't like erasing stuff, so maybe you just leave it for later because you don't know if you'll use it. Put it on a different layer. The other option that you can do, let me just back up, undo, undo, undo. The other option you can do is called fillet, not fillet, fillet, F I L L. ET. And you can hit fill it this and this, and it will set them. Now, fill it sometimes is set to a radius, and it'll even ask you that when you do it. Do you want to set a radius? And it'll put a rounded off edge on there. That's because fill it is a type of welding joint. And when you weld, there's a little gap of material that you leave. Um, that is just an extra fun bit of data that you can now forget. But it means that fillet will join two things that eventually join together. Now, if you try to fillet two things that are parallel, it won't work. But in AutoCAD, it's very easy to draw two things that are almost parallel, but not quite. Check this out. Joe, are you ready? There we go. Wait, but if you take two things that are almost parallel, it will take it to infinity and beyond. And you guys can't sense this, but my computer just slowed uh, way, way down. Cause it tried to, cause the drawing just doubled in size. If you have two lines that are very, 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 very close to, to perpendicular, it will try to take it out a million miles to where they actually connect with each other. So I generally, generally don't use fillet. It's not that I hate it. There's a time and a place for it. But when I'm first teaching people to learn AutoCAD, I'm like, eh, maybe stay away from fillet. Uh, the eraser command is also right here. It's the pencil eraser. And then there's another command called explode. And I wouldn't use it very often. We're going to use it later on this semester. I'll tell you when. But see if you grab this. It's all part of one thing. I can say explode. And now these are all separate little things. And they're their own lines unto themselves. Um, I just want to show you guys what that is because that completes the verb commands for today. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go into layer control. And this is why we're doing AutoCAD first and Illustrator second. Everybody else is probably going to be doing Illustrator first. That's also why I introduced it last class. But we're going to start with AutoCAD first. And it's about layer control. Layers are a hard thing to understand, but because we did Photoshop and analog Photoshop, you guys understand layers. They are digital things that are on top of each other and they go in an order. And it's how we keep things organized. So right now, it's kind of like a pen and ink drawing where it's all ink on the page. But if I go over here to layer properties and click on this, I'm gonna get this menu, which is the layer menu. And it's really helpful. The layer menu starts out with no layers, just layer zero. And if you hang out up here, you'll see that there's buttons and it says new layer, new layer from a frozen thing, delete layer, set as current layer. So let's add a new layer 
And we're going to call it construction lines because construction lines are your friends. And I'm going to spell it wrong. OK, so here's construction lines. And I always set construction lines to construction orange. So we're going to do that right there. You're going to see that you have your classic kind of old school AutoCAD colors, red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta, white, gray, one, and gray, two. And you also have 256 colors of really ancient, when I was a tiny kid, um, uh, colorings on a screen. And now you can do true colors, which is like billion, millions, 16 million colors. And we can also do color books, um, but we're not going to download that right now. Please, computer, don't load up that whole index. Okay. I'm going to stick with this. I think that when working in AutoCAD, it's really important to use bright, distinctly different colors. Let me say that again. When drawing in AutoCAD, it's important to use bright, distinctly different colors. When we draw by hand, it's important to draw with five line weights. When we draw in AutoCAD, it's important to use at least five colors. I like to use the colors green, magenta, cyan, I don't like using the color black because on the black background, it disappears. I don't like using the color white because the selector color is white. I sometimes don't like using the color red or yellow because those selection colors are the same. If you, like half my family, are colorblind, the red and the green can be really hard. And so you might want to choose a color palette that doesn't have you guessing whether it's red or green. So there's options and shades within that. For me, my colors are usually cyan, green, red, and, and orange. We're going to start with orange. So we're going to make that the color of the construction layer. And you can see that it changes here in the layer. We're going to add another layer while we're at it. And we're going to call it Andrew's Super Spectacular Good Times layer. And we're going to make it cyan, because that's a fun color. Index color. Cyan, thank you very much. And actually, you're going to see that it's as we make we make layers, it's going to be very easy to do a drawing that has 100 layers. So what I'm going to do is actually right click on here and say rename layer. And I'm going to start it with a double zero. And I'm going to go to construction lines, and I'm going to say rename layer. And I'm going to start it with a triple zero. That means that no long, no matter how I orient this, I can control where those lines are. And different offices actually have different layers that are set, and they're always that. Like the plumbing layer, my old firm was always layer 50. Plumbing attachments were always layer 51. Plumbing accessories were always layer 52. And then there was no layer 53. Toilet dispensers, layer 53. So toilets, layer 50, 52. Plumbing, 51. Attachments to the structure, 51. Anyway. Pipes, layer 50. So there are different sets, and they're different for every firm that you go to. Everybody manages their CAD differently. And as people start using BIM more, they manage that differently too. OK, so we have these two layers. You can see this green check mark means this is the current layer. We're going to close this by hitting the X. And watch what happens when I draw a line now. It is cyan. So that means it's on Andrew's super spectacular super awesome layer. Now, I can change the current layer by clicking on this little pull down menu and say, go to construction lines. And I can hit L. And you can see that I'm now drawing in orange. Now, one of the things that drawing computer and computer graphics that you can't do when you're drawing by hand, when you draw by hand, we talked about this in, in uh, Adobe Illustrator. When you draw fast, you can see that I'm drawing fast especially when I draw by hand. If I'm drawing uncertain, you can see that I'm drawing uncertain. But in AutoCAD, it all looks the same if I draw it fast or if I draw it slow. So I have a construction line layer to say, these are lines that I'm drawing for me. I also have like, sometimes I'll have like, if I have a survey or I have things that I'm guessing at, I will make a layer that's called guess. And I'll, I'll draw shapes around it. Sometimes I'll even add text. And I'll write text in here and says, I'm not sure if this is correct, especially if I'm giving the drawing to somebody else. I like having construction lines to organize my life. So let's draw some construction lines to organize our life. So I'm going to draw a line that shows the center of all 
of these circles. Hold shift to keep it orthogonal and enter. There we go. Hit escape to end it. All right, let's copy that with the copy command. Copy and snag you by the spot here and paste and paste and paste. And it'll keep on pasting until I tell it to stop and paste. Cool. I can even grab all of these and say copy as if I was copying from here. And this is what it would look like if I added more circles. Ah, now I have a, now I have rhythm and repetition. How nice. I might even have hierarchy. Very bueno. So we've got all of these. I could continue. If I wanted this grid to go across maybe my entire screen, I could say extend the construction lines to this line, extend this one. And of course, once the extend line is, is activated, as a matter of fact, I can save myself time by just going and using the selector tool across every single one. Pretty nice, huh? Not bad. So I can even take stuff that's on an existing layer. So see this bright cyan? Maybe I wanted that to be on the construction line. So let's select those. And we'll say, I want it, ah, if only there was a command that would allow me to change layer. When you're stuck in AutoCAD, describe what it is that you're trying to do. I'm trying to change this layer. Change layer. Change. Specify pointer properties. I want to, I want to change the properties of this line. Let's click it and find out. Ooh, do you want to change its color? Well, yeah, but really I want to change its layer. Do you want to change its thickness, its transparency? Hang on, it's layer. Oh, it's currently on Andrew's Super Spectacular Good Times layer. What layer do you want to change it to? I would like to change it to construction lines. This is getting really complicated, Andrew. I don't know that I can remember that. You know what? You don't have to. There's actually a handier way to do this. It's called match properties. Let's do this. Match properties is right here. It applies the property of the selected object to another object. Every time I do a drawing over here, I have a bunch of little shapes that I make on each layer. So I'll make an orange circle and then I'll change my layer to Andrew's super spectacular good times layer. And I'll make a cyan circle and then I'll change to the zero layer, which is a non-printing def points. You just need to know the vocabulary. And I can say, now I have a legend over here and I can paint with match properties. M-A-T-C-H, match prop. This is my favorite tool of all time. The funniest tool of all time is OSnap, but this is my favorite tool of all time. Match properties. All right, select the source object construction line. See, it turns into a paintbrush. Now, anything I paint with, it changes. Pretty sweet. Thank you very much. And you wanna stop? Okay, hit escape. You wanna repeat that? Right click, repeat match properties. I wanna turn this cyan. So back to cyan it goes. There we go. Not bad. If you think about the place that you went in Philadelphia, you could make a layer for each of the five senses. You could make one for sight, one for sound, one for touch, one for feeling. You could make um, you could make an X marks the spot for important spots that you were at. You could make, I don't know, angles where you took pictures, perhaps. Um, let's see, how would I draw that? Okay, well, uh, maybe. Maybe I would use a triangle. Is there a triangle? I guess there's not a triangle because what is that? That's a polygon. Polyline? No, polygon. Polygon. How many sides? Three. Specify the center. Oh, cool. So here's a triangle. And now I could point it in the direction that I took the photograph if I wanted to. Um, if only there was a rotate, R-O, hey, all right. So we can point it in the direction that we want it to go. So I could draw a layer that says roads. Although remember, I think roads don't deserve their own layer. I think the buildings are more important. We're architects, not traffic engineers. So you could use rectangle and you could kind of draw out how big you thought the Italian market was. And you could use another set of rectangles and you could draw out the areas where the things kind of came out. Um, 
you have to guess. You could use construction lines to make things line up. You could use move to move them around. You want to save every 15 minutes. Remember that too. I haven't saved yet. I'm walking on the wild side here. Um, but you could make a layer for buildings. You can make a layer for sounds, for sites. You could put in annotations, maybe X's or circles or different colors for different sensory information. If a drawing was actually this big, but it felt bigger, you could do this. And then you could use the stretch command to grab these points. And as a matter of fact, the stretch command actually works by default by just grabbing these corners and yanking stuff around. So if it felt like South Broad Street, the buildings were looming and had bigger shadows than they actually are, you could draw them here. If you've messed around in AutoCAD before, you probably know about this thing called hatching. If you've had Carol, you've probably done hatching by hand on drawings or poche. Please don't do hatching or poche in these drawings. We're just gonna draw with lines of different colors. And for now, for now, I would request that the colors that you use are bright and different. The last thing that I would request is that you don't change the color of a line just by itself. You change it by putting it on its own layer. So here's what I mean. Over here, next to match properties, you can change different aspects of its property. So you can actually change the color and it stays on the same layer, but it changes its color. This makes it very confusing to understand what it's like. It's like if somebody was an Eagles fan, but they were wearing Giants blue, from a distance, they would still look like a Giants fan, even though when they turned around and you saw the eagle on it, you'd be like, but that's an Eagles jersey or is it a Giants jersey? It's easier for it to just be Eagles fans are green and wear giant and wear green and wear Eagles jerseys and Giants fans are blue and white, red, and they wear blue and red and they're Giants fans. It's a lot easier to keep them on the same layer. So for homework, Here's what you're going to do. You've been making all of these delicious, amazing, very cool and exciting collages, both analog and both analog and uh, digital. What I would like for you to do is to make a map of where this place is. And if, if this place in Philadelphia that you've been looking at is starting to remind you of an Italo Calvino city, good for you. Because the Italian market is not ninth below Washington. The Italian market is a place to go where you smell cheese and chickens, you smell food from all around the world, where you can connect with Philadelphians who live within five blocks, but their families come from all over. It's like a huge transit center, but instead of like meeting them in their language, you can meet them in the language of their food. How would you draw that? What are the sensory informations that you would draw from that? How would you draw the smell wafting across the street while simultaneously trying to bundle up against the cold? Was your site Fleischer Art Memorial? And the streets are so narrow that as you Google map around there, not just Fleischer Art Memorial, but all the little tiny nooks and crevices of the streets around there. They're so small that they almost feel like a car wouldn't fit down them. How, did you need to draw the big streets bigger than they actually are, and then smaller than they actually are, maybe. If you did South Broad Street or North Broad Street, where the buildings are imposing and have big personalities or different size personalities, where vortexes of wind or space kind of pull you towards different things, maybe you should draw things that are louder, bigger, prouder, okay? When we come to class on Tuesday, I would like you to have at least two different maps. I would suggest that on every drawing, there's an X and a Y. I would draw one of your maps on the right-hand side of the X and the Y and one of your maps on the left-hand side. This way, you can keep adding layers and maps. You can keep adding sensory information. You can use as many layers as you should. You should have at least 10 layers. Two maps, at least 10 layers. Now, my suggestion is to work on one map between now and Saturday. And my suggestion is to do the other map on Sunday and maybe a little bit on Monday. And then my suggestion is to try to make them a little bit better. Like go back to your first map 
on Sunday afternoon after you've gotten the rhythm down. Because part of learning AutoCAD is just the rhythm of the buttons. And it's really hard at first, but once you get the rhythm of the buttons, it starts getting easier and easier. And it comes much faster than Photoshop. So we're skipping ahead of the other sections to do CAD, but then I'm going to show you guys that this is going to be, these drawings are going to look ugly. All right. They're going to look like stick figure drawings that you made when you were five. It looks like you're drawing with crayons and it's going to be great. Let's have as much fun as we were five and we were drawing with crayons. Let's just have that freedom, that fearlessness. But use your architectural vocabulary, rhythm and repetition, open and void, solid, colors. You guys did, Madrian. All of those skills that you learned as a D1 student, apply them here and now. You can even start to draw things to, that look like they might be in a perspective or an axonometric. It's up to you. I'm leaving the door open and inviting you to explore and make it look as, make it, make it be a demonstration of your abilities. We are going to run into some problems. Number one, somebody is going to get the cookie award. And when you get it, write down what happened, tell, about, tell us about it in class, and get yourself a cookie. Take a break and come back to it. So don't be bummed that it happened. Plan on it happening. That way, when it happens, you'll be like, all right, I planned on that. Check. OK? You don't have to try to, um, to crash AutoCAD. It just will on you when you want it not to. OK? We're going to go over saving in just a minute. Another problem that we're going to have is scale. And another problem that we're going to have is units. I will go over how to deal with scale and units on our next class. So for right now, you're going to see that this is in a scale of nothing, right? It's in decimals. And nothing that we measure in the imperial system is in decimals. We will go over how to do units uh, shortly. But first, we need some drawings with some matter on them. If you would like to include a picture of Philadelphia, to draw over top of, you can. You can do a screen grab of like a Google Street View. That's a lot faster. Um, and you can say insert right here, and you can insert a photo, or you can attach or clip into an, an image. All right. Uh, it's relatively easy to download an image. There's set location. There's other things that you can you can look around at. So we can actually set the location from a file or a map. That's not really what we want to do, but you can add a uh, you can add a photo point. No, that's in aperture. That's a different one. I'm getting my programs messed up. But you can add a um, a frame. The only other thing I would say is that if you've already done AutoCAD before, you might know what a block is or a block library, where you might have like furniture or cars or trees. And at this point. I would not like to see any of that. So if you have it, great, but please don't use it. I would rather you drew stuff. Um, people are awesome. Circles are really awesome for people. Um, the last thing that you can do is that if these solid lines are starting to get a little bit weird, you could do a polyline, P line, PL, like this. And let's just set this back to home. Layer properties. I just want to show you guys that you can do new layer. Let's do it. Layer 10, people walking. We'll do it in the color bright green. And over here, we'll say line type. Rather than continuous, we'll say load. All right. So again, uh, if you're following on the recording that we post later, load dash line. OK. OK. And you'll see that it's set as a. Dash line, OK. Come on, there you go. There it is, ISO dash. And now we can select this, and we can change the layer. People walking, and there it is, and it's dashed. I got one more trick up my sleeve. We did the line, we did the P line, and now let's do the SP line, or the spline. SP line is a spline. And I really love this line. This line is really beautiful. A spline is what auto, which is what Illustrator does most of the time. To get out of it, you hit escape. No, sorry, let's do that again. To get out of it, you hit escape in Illustrator. Here, we hit enter. There we go. So right click and hit enter. And a spline is this 
curved line and you can grab it by the control vertices and you can move it around and it has this kind of energy to it so when it goes through one of the control vertices depending on how much you push or pull it so if you want to make things malleable or you want to have like an area or a region you can do closed shapes as well as open shapes with splines really quickly i'm going to go over the tools that we went over and i'm going to show you guys how to save and then we'll stop the recording so i can answer questions so first, we open AutoCAD, AutoCAD Architecture 2020, 2019. You're using your free educational version. L is for line. PL is for polyline, which is a line of multiple segments that's treated together. C is for circle. CO is for copy. ARC is for an arc. AR is just an array. REC, rectangle, is for rectangle. There is no square command. Pretty sure. Nope. SPL is for spline, which is the wiggly lines. Match prop is the match properties tool. And so if you make a legend for yourself over here, you can paint things onto whatever layer you want them onto. Move is M. MA is also match properties. See how if you forget any of these, just type the letter, wait for the command to come up, and you can even scroll through it. Z is for zoom. When you click on zoom, it's a dynamic command tool. So it gives you these other things, right? All, center, extents, previous, object. Those are the best ones. All, extents, previous and object. Those are the best ones. You can mouse wheel in and out to zoom. Copy is CO. Copy is also control C, the universal copy on any computer. Undo is control Z, the universal undo on any computer, control Z. Control V is paste on any computer, control V. Control X is cut on any computer, it's control X. Erasing things is this pencil eraser tool or erase if you have a regular keyboard, the delete key or the backspace. I do not have that. I have a Mac. It does not work that way. Stretch. You can start typing stretch to get stretch, but you can also click anything and grab it by its control vertex and stretch it into that space. Rotate, R-O. Trim, T-R, which is a dynamic because it has these and you need to select what it's going to extend or trim to. You can use a fence to trim. You can hover over this for an animation or you can hit F1 to get more information on how to use that. F1 is the universal help. Mirror, MI. Array, AR, scale, SC. Explode, EX. If we didn't go over offset, Go ahead and explore it. It's not a dangerous tool. Layer properties. Layer properties. It's easiest to just go up to here, but you can also type in prop to get properties. But layer properties will bring up the layer properties command, and this will give you a new layer. I recommend that you make them bright and different. You can load a different line type if you would like by double clicking on this going load, and then selecting what you want. I recommend not doing the S's. I remember, I like dosh, uh, dat, sorry, dot, dash, and dash dot. Those are nice. Long dash, long dot, those can be nice. That's about it. The zero layer is always white and it's usually non-printing. So make your drawings on everything else. I recommend double, triple zero for construction lines and make it orange. That way everybody knows that construction lines are uncertain and they're orange and they're there. If you don't like them, you can turn them off by poking the light bulb in the eye and turning it off and all the orange lines will go away. And if you wanna bring it back, just go back down here and poke the, poke the light bulb again and it'll come back. You can also freeze them, which looks like doing the same thing, but it's not. You can also lock them so you don't mess them up, which is just like locking a layer in Photoshop. Eventually, when your drawing starts getting really complex, sometimes you have to turn some stuff off to keep it so that you can work on it. A drawing is only as good as its systems 
it's rhythm, it's repetition, it's hierarchy, it's open spaces, it's closed spaces, it's structure, it's scaffolding. Most of the times, a first year student draws a drawing with too few lines. I challenge you for Tuesday to draw a map of the space that you went that is that maps the perceptions, not the physical objects in and of themselves, but expands to include your perceptions and has more lines than you know what to do with. Because unlike a pencil and pen drawing, I can show you guys how to edit it, change it, move it around and make it better. But I can't show you how to make it better if there's not enough ingredients to make the cookies with. Last thing to do, make as many layers as possible. I would like you to have at least 10, at least two maps with at least 10 layers. All right, it's time to do save. To save, we type save or control S. If you've never saved the file before, it will ask you what to name it. So I'm gonna do control S, save. Here we go. We are gonna save it as, this is important, we are not going to save it as a 2020 or 2017 AutoCAD file. We're actually going to save it down to 2010. All right, so we're going to make this AutoCAD file 11 years young. Save it to DWG. All right, and you're going to save it with today's date, starting with the year, then the month, then the day, then your last name, then your first name, and then a brief description. So in class, experiment. And you're going to save it. If you would like to insert a picture from Google Maps of a street view, or better yet, photographs that you took, or better yet, a collage that you made, please have at. Please, please, please put it on a layer and go at it. Maps do not necessarily have to be from above. Maps can be experiential, three-dimensional, they can be wavy, they can be things that go across each other. I will have a lecture on different types of maps to share with you on Tuesday. We'll talk about the scale and the problems for this. And you'll be like, why does this connect to Adobe Illustrator? And we'll start to show you how Adobe Illustrator makes everything look beautiful again. All right, make sure and save every five to 15 minutes. Stop recording now. Stop recording. Stop recording. Ah, stop recording. Stop screen sharing. Now it's just Andrew.